Welcome to Soccer As You Like It. My name is Tim Ross, your host, and today's edition is going to be based on World Cup qualifications we've had over the last couple of days. We're going to start from South America, North America, Africa, Europe, and Asia. We have lots of exciting games, smashing games, some unforgettable games, some games that, oh, I've got. That's not a game. And there's some games whereby we're going to say, that was fantastic, that free kick was fantastic, that goal was famous, that goal was lovely. But there's some goals are like, what happens next? Right, the last time we spoke, we were still having some good shows coming up. We did, in that time, a lot has changed. In America, we now have a new president elect. We've had the Veterans Day. And we're going to go straight right into it. We're going to start with South America. There was a big game between Brazil and Argentina, two rivals. My take on it was, Messi catching a flight to Brazil on Neymar's private jet. The buddiness, even though they're both friends in Barcelona, but when it comes to country, people doubt it is loyalty, like, you know, are you going to do your best to defeat your friend's country? But once he put on that yellow shirt, he was on fire. They destroyed Argentina by three goals to nothing. Three, zero. Yes, you heard me. Three goals to nothing. The, the goal, the first goal by Coutinho, Fantastic. He took a shot from 25 yards. He thought he was playing at Anfield when he would take shots. He took this shot. The keeper never got to it. He wouldn't have got it. It was an angle 90. At 90 degree angle, the shot hit the, went out into the net. And unfortunately, Argentina never recovered. Uh, an, an Argentina team that had Messi, Di Maria, Higuain, Mascherano, Zabaleta. You don't expect to get fresh 3-0, do you? But this is the state of affairs in Argentina football now. It's, all, it's not all about Messi. It's about the whole team is dysfunctional at this current time. And Brazil destroyed uh, three beautiful goals. Neymar's goal was beautiful. Coutinho's goal was fantastic. It was Polito's goal. Was, it was just beautiful to watch. December beat. They, they played that game in the ground where they got destroyed by Germany 7-1 in the last World Cup. So it was, they were able to bury the ghost of that horrendous nation defeat that's never going to go away in the life history of Brazil football. But they were able to destroy Argentina in that game. So Argentina were destroyed freezer by Brazil who are currently leading the group. Our second game is Uruguay against Ecuador. Ecuador are playing some good football, but a team which has players like Suarez and Diego Forlan, yes, Diego Forlan, he's still playing for, he's still playing for Uruguay. They were able to, dis, be, able to beat Ecuador by two goals to one. Even though that defeat, Ecuador are still third in the table. Colombia and Chile was a nil nil draw. It was a very tight game, very cagey affair, but uh, Chile were able to get the one point that was required for them to, 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 to move further up the table. Argentina played the second game in the group three days later at home to Colombia. They were able to humble themselves by destroying Colombia by three goals to nothing. Messi scored a fan. If you haven't seen it, go and look at the goal. Messi's free kick was phenomenal. That was Messi. That was what we expected from him against Brazil, but he was nowhere to be found. He went missing. He went A1. He went MI. Missing in action. He went MIA. But Messi, he came back against Colombia and scored a beautiful free kick and led his team to a 3 0 victory over Colombia. But is that going to be enough? They're struggling. They can't. In, South, in, the South, um, in the South American qualifications, only the first four get automatic, automatic spot, only the first spot. The fifth has to go into a playoff. Currently, Argentina are sixth at the moment. You have Brazil, Uruguay, Ecuador, Chile, then Argentina, who are four points behind the fourth spot. So, can they make the ground? Can you imagine a World Cup about Argentina? But we'll, we'll leave that alone. Chile's last second game was against Uruguay. And boy, did they turn up. They beat Uruguay by three goals to one. Alexis Sanchez for Arsenal, he destroyed, Ur he destroyed Uruguay. Uruguay didn't know what hit them. But that gave Chile the opportunity to climb up the table and they are doing very well. Watch that group. That group is going to get, get very tight. Peru beat, Peru lost the home to Brazil to run out the, the result at the South American qualification. We're going, to, we're going to quickly go over to Asia, where Japan is leading. Japan dis beat uh, Saudi Arabia by two goals to one, topping that group also. Thailand played 2-2 with Australia. No one saw that coming. Everyone expected an away victory for Australia. But Thailand, that group in Asia, never underestimate the teams out there because they are so dangerous. China and Qatar was a nil-nil draw. But what I'm trying to say, in the Asian group, it's very tight. It's very tight. So watch that group and 
we'll keep you posted at this end. When we come back, we're gonna take our first commercial break. When we come back, we're gonna have we're gonna go over the group in the, the World Cup qualification group in Africa, the World Cup qualifications in North America and in Europe. Stay tuned, soccer as we like it. We are right here, we're waiting for it when we come right back. Segment of the show, we're gonna cover the North American group, the European group, and we're gonna probably touch on briefly on the African group. Now, in North America, currently there seems to be a slight problem. USA, a big game, just right after the election, you had USA against Mexico. We all know what the political situation is in America in reference to the Hispanics and the American with this political, this new politi poli uh, political situation that just the election that has just been covered, which had just been won by Donald Trump. But moving on back to soccer, Mexico were coming to play in the United States. The game was played in Ohio. A very cold place, but it was filled to the capacity. And Mexico defeated Mexico defeated USA by two goals to one. In the first 20 minutes, USA could have been 4-0 down because they decided to play a 3-5-2 system that wasn't going to work. The defenders at the back had no clue what they were doing. They were supposed to move the ball from the back, but they kept losing possession and the wingers on the, the Mexicans were taking them down, especially on the left flank of the on the right flank of the USA, that which is the left side of the Mexican team. They were burning that wing like there was no one there. And they should have scored more than two goals in the whole game. The first half game should have been four or three nil down. But Mexico scored first, and USA in the second half came back with a 4-4-2 method and changed and started putting playing pressure, uh, high pressure on Mexico up the field and got the, the got the equalizer. It was a great goal, great equalizer for USA, but slack marking, slack defending caused another goal, a headed goal by a legend in the Mexican team. And he scored the goal, making it 2-1 to Mexico, and they took all three points. Earlier in the day, Trinidad played at home to Costa Rica. Costa Rica is another team which has players. The goalkeeper for Costa Rica is the goalkeeper for Real Madrid. Trinidad kept going forward and kept leaving the defenders open. And Costa Rica are so defensive, but they hit you on the break, there's no stopping them. They were able to beat Trinidad by two goals to nil and took the three points. In the second game, which was three, because the, the, there were three games, there were two games within the space of five days. Costa Rica were now playing a home to the USA, where USA have never ever beaten America. USA have never beaten Costa Rica ever at Costa Rica's home ground. And it was no different this time. USA were all over the place. In fact, it was embarrassing. It was a shambolic, abysmal performance. I don't know what young Klinsman would think about it, but it was a very, very poor performance. They lost by four goals to nothing. The goals. The, the third goal, the second and the third and the fourth, it was one on one with the keeper. The keeper had no chance, had no choice. He had no chance against these marooning Costa Rican strikers who were bombarding that six yard box like, the, like a knife through butter. It was like there was no defense, they were just running right through it. In the, char in the opportunity of America going to chase an equalizer, they considered a second, a third, a fourth. They couldn't even get an equalizer. They ended up losing the goal, four goals to nil. Trinidad lost the, the second game in, in, in as much days. And Paraguay and Mexico drew nil nil. So the group is like Mexico's now leading, Costa Rica is leading the group, and America is now bottom with zero points, two games played, and six goals conceded and one goal scored. Can they come back? They usually do come back, but football has changed. Football changes every time. Football changes every World Cup situation, and every team gets better. Some teams get worse, but some teams get better. So what that space? I'm gonna quickly go over to Africa now. In Africa. Only one team qualified for the group. There are no playoffs. The winner takes it all. The one ticket. You have five groups. I think you've got five groups. And the winner takes it all. We go to Nigeria's group. Nigeria played the game at home to Algeria. One of the biggest um, competitors over the years. Now, if you, if you remember, Nigeria beat Algeria 3-0 in the African Cup of Nations in 1980. The first African Championship uh, uh, win. And 1982, Algeria stopped Africa, Nigeria going to the World Cup by beating Nigeria home and away in 1982 World Cup qualifications for Spain. This was a different situation, a different scenario, a different generation of players and a different system of football. Nigeria was able to beat Algeria by three goals to one, two goals from Mo, uh, 
Moses, the, the Chelsea guy, that was a beautiful football from him, and uh, Algeria never had a chance to come back into that game. That's Nigeria's second victory. The previous victory was a, a 2-1 victory away to Zambia. Zambia and Cameroon played a 1-1 draw. So the group is now with Nigeria topping that group with 6 points. In, other, in another match, you had uh, Egypt and Ghana. Ghana are very reputable time. These are two giants of Africa. Egypt destroyed Ghana by two goals to nothing and that put a big dent because the previous game Ghana was only able to get one point with a nil nil draw. So is there a problem in Ghana? I think there is. They need to start scoring goals because the ticket is going to start disappearing away slowly, slowly, slowly. And the last game there was the Guinea and Democratic Republic of Congo. We have uh, Bayasi who plays for Everton. Scored the winning goal for Democratic Republic against uh, Guinea. So Democratic Republic of Congo won two goals to one in that in that match. You had, uh, you also had Cameroon and Zambia. You also had Libya and Tunisia. Libya losing losing at home to Tunisia, one goal to nothing. So that will conclude our African uh, qualification group, and we will see you right after this commercial break. Soccer as we like it. Stay tuned. Final segment of soccer as we like it. My name is Tim Russell House, and we're going to cover the European qualifications in this segment. If we start with one of the cracking games, we had France against Sweden. We had France leading, beating Sweden by two goals. One. That is a very tight group. You have Sweden, you have France, you have Holland. Three major World Cup players. For all of them to be in the same group, I think that's a bit harsh in reference to the FIFA ranking and the FIFA groupings. I think that's a very tough group, and I think it's only there's the options there are the winner will take all, and there's a playoff. That's the only option. But France, a beautiful goal for Pogba uh, and Depay. Uh, a, 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 a beautiful goal from Pogba was able to win the game for France when they defeated Sweden by two goals to one. Northern Ireland beat Azerbaijan by four goals to nothing. The game played at Windsor Park. It was an easy game for Northern Ireland. But is Azerbaijan, are you going to use them to measure your, 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 your football? No. They are not exactly a football nation, but they're just making up the numbers. San Marino home to Germany. San Marino just making up numbers. Eight goals to Germany, no goals to San Marino. Eight, it was a training practice for Germany. Eight goals scored, no goals conceded. It was a training practice for Germany. Poor San Marino, I feel for you guys, but I ask, why can't FIFA just have a tournament for the teams who don't go anywhere into another small tournament and the best will come out and join the big boys? Because this is embarrassing. This is actually embarrassing. Playing San Marino. It's poor, but hey, people are going to use these teams to get points. England are home to Scotland. This used to be the old enemy. England and Scotland, they have history. But times have changed so far that Scotland are so bad defensively that the whole soccer federation is in a shambolic state. Scotland that produced players from the, the players, Kenny Douglas, Graham Sooners, Andy Gray, Alan Hansen, John Wall, the list, the list was endless, Gordon McQueen, Joe Jordan. We don't have that caliber of players now. Go, we don't have them. Gordon Shackle could tell you, when he played in the, in the Scottish national team in the early 90s and the late 80s, they had quality. But today, Scotland, I don't know what's going on. They have no quality of players and they're just, it's really bad. I don't think they're going to qualify for any major tournament for not for another 20 years. I'm seriously telling you this now. They are so poor. When they came to Wembley, the, when the Tartan army comes to Wembley, they come ready. This team turned up like they were coming to a party in their pink shirts like a bunch of daisies and donkeys. They were poor. They made England look like superstars. Three goals, game done. Goodbye and good night. We also had Austria. At home, Austria, very chicky at home. But Ireland, under the leadership of Roy Keane and Martin O'Neill, got the team to get a 1 0 victory away in Austria, leading the group. And that's the same group with Wales. And Wales dropped another one, another point. They drew 0 0. Drop, played a 1 1 draw. You can't keep playing draws. You need to win. The last two games have all been draws. So they've dropped a, a, out of nine points. They've only taken three. And this group is getting tighter and tighter. So, are Wales a flash in the pond? Are they flash in the pan? Is this a one-off? Is this are this a one-hit wonder? Only time will tell. But I think Coleman is going to get these guys back into action. 
Croatia were able to beat Iceland two goals to nil. Iceland are a very great team. They destroyed England in the last European Championship. But Ireland, Iceland, they tried. But Croatia are a very good team when it comes to technical football. Also, we had Portugal and Latvia, led by Cristiano Ronaldo. He got he scored two goals for uh, 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 Portugal, and he missed the penalty, missing his opportunity to get a hat trick. He scored a fantastic scissors kick. Check that goal out. Beautiful goal for Cristiano Ronaldo and Portugal. But they still trail Switzerland by a point. Belgium beat Estonia eight goals to nothing under the leadership of Thierry Henry and Martinez. But Lukaku was on form. But Estonia, can you measure your, your, your football brilliance by beating the team like Estonia? No. Estonia, not exactly like a football nation, but hey, eight goals. It has to your, 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 your goal difference. So here we go. Luxembourg losing at home to Holland. Another team like San Marino that are just there to make up numbers. Please, 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 can we talk? Stop adding these teams so that people just keep hitting them. They've gotten better, but honestly, really, are they that good? They are that bad. They can't eat. Holland beat Luxembourg by three goals to one, as we all know. Uh, Memphis Depay gets his first three goals in a long time. I think Memphis Depay is a very talented and skillful player, but I don't think he's been given a chance. And if you think back, if you're a Manchester United fan, we all know that. LVG destroyed Memphis Depay's career, just like he destroyed Di Maria's career, just as he de destroyed other players' careers in Manchester United. But can he come back from this? That those two goals were really good for to bring his confidence back for him, and he needs to continue working on that. He's very. I always say, talented, gifted players don't just go bad overnight. So if we look at it. Jose Marino needs to give the Memphis Depay, uh, if this is my opinion, this is my show. He's a better player, more skillful, more technical than Lingard. He's more technical, more skillful than Ashley Young. But, he's not getting time to play for Manchester United. I think Jose needs to give him more time and let the guy able to shine and show his talent. I'll